Nevertheless, in the spring of 1887 in Moscow, I delivered my first public report on a metal balloon. Nothing in comparison with the might of society. What could I do alone? Or recognize them, or that I believe that all I say is my own discovery. From childhood days, because of my deafness, I have had but one source, what is written or what is printed. Without science, without this storage house of the works of great people of all times and all nations, I would be infinitesimal. In my experiments, I have reached My financial position Regretfully, human psychology does not change easily, and even the most brilliant inventions can be used against man. That could have happened to Tselkovsky's invention too. Tselkovsky was well aware of this, but he was equally aware that progress could not be stopped. He believed that all great discoveries should have a corresponding philosophy, which could prevent the discovery from being misused. And so defenseless. In my mind, I leaf through the pages of the history of sciences. Galileo was tortured, jailed, and forced in disgrace to renounce his ideas. Bruno was burned at the stake. Mayer was driven to insanity by ridicule from the scholars of his day. The chemist Lavoisier was executed. The French Academy turned its back on Darwin, the Russian Academy on Mendeleev. The inventor of book printing, Gutenberg, died in poverty. They defy counting those who were burnt at the stake or executed for championing the truth. History abounds in such facts. And why was it that academies and scholars were destined to play the sorry role of extinguishers of truth, of its hangmen? Let us be In working on my rocket installations, I was pursuing high and peaceful goals to conquer the universe for the good of man, 